my dear students today we will learn about one abiotic factor namely light light is an important abiotic factor that influences various parameters of the ecosystem light is a form of energy and source of light is sun during night time moon and stars act as the sources of light moon is an indirect source of light energy light has got dual nature and it may travel in the form of a wave or it may travel in the form of a light packets called photons and because of this dual nature of light its role in the ecosystem and its role in the physical world is very crucial light influences many factors and many metabolic activities and also behavioral patterns of organisms the light coming from the sun is divided into three zones namely ultraviolet rays visible light radiation and infrared rays visible light radiation is made up of seven colors namely vijaya ultraviolet rays are not visible to the human eye whereas there are certain insects like honey bees which can see ultraviolet rays now this light energy travels from the space travels through the space and reaches the planet earth and this influences color pigmentation visual responses reproductive behavior etc now let us consider the influence of light on uh, locomotion the response of an animal to light is called phototaxis if any animal moves away from light it is called a negative phototaxis if any animal moves towards light it is called positive phototaxis euglena exhibit positive phototaxis Artwam exhibits negative phototaxis. Movement of plant pots either towards light or away from the light is called phototrophism. Animal responses are called taxis and the plant responses are called trophism. The difference between taxis and trophism is in taxis the entire animal moves in response to a particular stimulus. whereas in case of tropism the entire plant does not move only a part of the plant body moves either towards or away from the stimulus so phototrophism is exhibited by the plants root system is negatively phototrophic and the shoot system of a plant is positively phototrophic and the larva of pinnotherus maculatus rotates in presence of light in a faster manner and this is called photokinesis in phototaxis and phototrophism there is clear direction the parts of the entire organism either move towards or away from the source of light whereas in case of photokinesis the direction does not play any crucial role the larva simply rotates with greater speed in the presence of light and coming to pigmentation in presence of light melanin synthesis occurs and synthesis of melanin is thus considered as a photochemical reaction in certain animals like proteus which is an amphibian it's a cave dweller of course and we know pretty well that the cave is characterized by the total absence of light radiation dark environment prevails within the cave 
and because of the absence of light radiation the proteus lacks melanin and it appears white in color and its eyes are also not functional because no animal can see in total darkness at least a ray of light is required even for nocturnal animals to see whereas in cave there is pitch darkness as a result the eyes of proteus are non functional but when this proteus is taken outside of the cave it becomes darker due to the synthesis of melanin and its eyes start functioning and we also know that even human and animal vision is controlled by availability of light in retina of human being there are two types of uh, cells called rods and cones and the rods are responsible for uh, night or dark vision whereas cones are responsible for color vision which are again based on the presence and absence of light radiation and vitamin d is also synthesized in the presence of ultraviolet rays there are three types of uh, uv rays namely uva uvb and uvc and excess of uv rays no doubt will result in skin cancers but reasonable quantities of uv rays are required for the synthesis of vitamin d and in the absence of light radiation that means if the individuals are not exposed to light radiation they will be running short of vitamin d leading to so many disorders like rickets knock knees pigeon breast osteoporosis osteomalacia etc some animals are active during night time that means in the absence of light they are very active such animals are called nocturnal animals and some animals are active during day time when light availability is abundant and animals that are active during day time are called diurnal and coming to the division of lake depending on the penetration of light radiation the lake is divided into three zones namely epilimnion hypolimnion like that in one classification this is nothing but of course ep means uh, external and hypo means internal and this division is based on one more uh, parameter namely temperature and in between these two there is one area called thermocline and we have also seen in one uh, lesson where lake is divided into littoral limnatic and profundal zone but based on light penetration and availability the lake is divided into euphotic region where there is maximum availability of light radiation dysphotic region this is almost present in the middle of the lake where the light available is sufficient only for animal responses but not for fine stimuli third zone which can be comparable to the hypolimnion of temperature zone and also profundal zone and that uh, third zone is called aphotic zone aphotic zone is characterized by the absence of light so based on light the lake uh, ecosystem is uh, divided into euphotic dysphotic and aphotic regions and the light is also responsible for creating certain migratory behaviors within an individual the period between sunrise and sunset is called uh, photo period and this photo period is uh, longer during summer and this photo period is shorter during winter the organisms that reproduce during winter are called the short day organisms and the organisms that reproduce during summer are called the long day organisms uh, surprisingly human being is a neutral animal photo period doesn't have any influence on the reproductive behavior of the human being of course but this influence of photo period on reproductive patterns of the other animals is called photoperiodism this is also responsible for triggering 
migratory patterns in the birds. For example, during severe winter in Siberia, the gonads get covered by cholesterol. That means cholesterol gets accumulated around the gonads. This cholesterol should be shunted towards steroid hormone synthesis. But if the birds remain in the Siberia, even during chilling winter, the cholesterol instead of getting shunted towards uh, steroid hormone synthesis, it gets uh, shunted towards uh, lipid synthesis and the lipid gets accumulated towards the gonads. Now, when the cholesterol starts getting accumulated around the gonads, so now this creates a behavioral regulation, namely migration. This stimulates the migratory pattern. That means during winter, whenever the cholesterol starts accumulating around the gonads, the birds will get a migratory stimulus and they start flying towards their migratory destinations. And there is one more aspect called lunar periodicity. Lunar periodicity is the influence of phases of moon on the reproductive patterns of animals. Full moon day and the no moon day. Full moon day and the new moon day. Have their own influences on the reproductive patterns of animals. There is one worm called Palalo worm which is swarms during full moon day. And the last but not the least regarding the influence of light is bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is emission of cold light by organisms. You might have heard about fireflies and there are certain eurocordates like pyrosoma and some more organisms like noctiluicon ceratium, gonyolux, all these organisms exhibit bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is nothing but emission of cold light and luciferin is a protein that is required for bioluminescence. Luciferin gets oxidized in the presence of luciferase producing cold light and in this reaction oxyluciferin is formed and the light and water are the byproducts. Like that cold light is produced due to the oxidation of luciferin in the presence of luciferase. And this emission of cold light is called bioluminescence and all uh, wavelengths are available in the bioluminescent light. But green, yellow and blue colors predominate. No doubt all wavelengths are available in the bioluminescent radiation but green, yellow and blue colors predominate in bioluminescent light. And this bioluminescence is exhibited by organisms in order to attract the mate and also to attract the foot. And during the time of Aristotle, Aristotle used to carry all these bioluminescent organisms in a glass jar and he used to take this, he used to take this glass jar filled with bioluminescent organism as a lamp. He used it as a lamp. This is a sort of lateral thinking or out of box thinking. That is the reason why he has become or why he has been regarded as father of biology. So let me sum up the abiotic component light properties. Light is an abiotic component and uh, light is dual in its nature. It may travel in the form of a wave or it may travel in the form of a pocket called photon and uh, it influences photosynthesis. Light is required for chlorophyll where uh, the electrons get excited uh, to the upper orbits or uh, outer orbits. 
Again, they fall back and during this process, energy is released and this is responsible for various steps in photosynthesis. And light also influences pigmentation, vision, behavioral patterns, migratory behavior and movements like uh, photokinesis, phototrophism and uh, phototaxis. And bioluminescence is nothing but the emission of cold light. And the protein required for bioluminescence is luciferin and the enzyme that is required for bioluminescence is luciferase and it is an oxidizing reaction. These are the fine points under one abiotic factor namely light. Thank you very much.